God is good and all the time. I'm going to be preaching from what I have titled prayer more than words. Now, for a lot of us as Christians, one of the things that we see is we assume that we know what prayer is just because every single time we come to church, we kneel down, we say a few words, and then uh, we believe that there is God that we're, we're praying to. Sometimes we get our answers, sometimes we don't. But today we're going to be talking about the actual purpose of prayer. Uh, I know that two weeks ago I was here to talk about... Um, how many of you were here two weeks ago? Okay, great. And two weeks ago we, uh, we talked about seasons. I think I titled it, Is Anyone Out There? where we also kind of talked about prayer, but we talked about it in, this, um, in the sense of when it seems prayers are not answered. So today we're talking about prayer. We're going to be talking about prayer a lot anyway, so be prepared. All right, so today we're talking about prayer. Now, for every single time we kneel down to pray or to say a few words to God, um, it is easy for us to, to say the words that we say and we believe that God has heard. But this conversation or this uh, that I'm doing this morning is not necessarily just to um, tell us that we don't know how to pray, but it is more or less like a reminder for why we pray. Now, in, um, when the disciples were talking with Jesus, they, they asked him in Matthew 6, 9 to 13. It said, uh, I mean, in Matthew 6, it said, uh, teach us how to pray. And in verse 6, 9 to 13, he said, after this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. When we take a look at all of these verses, and Jesus was teaching us exactly what prayer was about, we would, if we study each line, we're going to see that there, is, um, there are more parts in, that, in those lines of prayer that talks about God's will or God's intention or what God prefers or what God uh, has determined to be uh, prevalent in our lives much more than what we have. Yes, there's that line that, looks, that says, give us this day our daily bread. But even in that line, what we see is the total dependence on God. Total dependence on God. So when we see this, what we see is that prayer essentially is more about God than it is about us. For a lot of us, when we go in to God in prayer, we're quick to ask God for the things that we need. Yes, we need that healing, we need that car, we need that job, we need that money, we need these different things. But of what Jesus is telling us here is it is more about God than it is about us. In Proverbs chapter, um, where did I put my notes? Okay, in Luke chapter 18 verse 1, Jesus was talking and he said, the Bible says, and he spake a parable unto, unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. Now, does that mean that every single moment that we're walking about, we're mumbling something? I'm not sure that's exactly what Jesus is talking about here, but he's making a comparison between two things. It says you have to always pray. If you are not always praying, then you are fainting. 
And when we take a look at the purpose of prayer, when Jesus taught them how to pray, and it looks into the will of God, the things that God would want, and then he says, if you are not praying, you are not performing or establishing the will of God, then what you're doing is you're fainting. And what is fainting? Fainting is, um, okay, what is fainting? It's when you're uh, unconscious. Uh, you, you could say uh, it's like an example of a coma. You are alive, but not really. You are, uh, you are there, but not really. You are, um, you are alive, but you can't do anything. You're just susceptible to the things of nature. You know? Because when, when a person is in a coma or, faint, or has fainted, anything they do to him at that point, is, he, he doesn't have control over it. So Jesus is saying here that if you're not praying, then what you're doing is you're, not, you're practically not alive even though you have a semblance of life. So when he said, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, then is looking at every single time that you kneel to pray, what are the contents of your prayer? Are the contents of your prayer directed towards you? Or are they directed towards the things that God would want done? So for every time that, if every time I come to God, I'm always praying about something that I want. Okay, yes, God is our Father. He wants our needs to be met. But the needs that God will meet also have to align with the, his will for you or his will for whatever he has chosen to do. So when you go to God to pray and you're not and you're not praying about the things that are according to his will. And what helps us to know what his will is? The Bible says in the book of Psalms that thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. That is what gives us the, um, that's what tells us the written will of God. And I'm sure a lot of us here know what the meaning of a will it is a written testament, legal document, that tells you the dictates of what should happen to a person's properties and maybe inheritances when they're gone. So when God gives us his will to read at every point, it tells us what he, what he wants done uh, in our lives, in our environment, in our families, over our children, over our spouses, whatever it is, he tells us what that will is. So for every single time that you go to God and you're praying, it is essentially to establish his will. Amen? Are we together? Okay. Please wake the person beside you. Say, get up. <laughs> now, in also, in Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, the Bible says that, But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. By every word that comes out of the mouth of God. So one of the things that we know is that we have the written word, which is the Bible, but oftentimes... I don't know if anybody is here that you've spent time praying to a level where you begin to get prayer points that you're certain is not from you. Anybody here? Okay, a few of us. How many of you have ever prayed to a point where you know that the issue is not settled yet, but you have peace of mind about it? Okay. How many of you have ever prayed and then you got up from that place still worried. Okay, some hands are not going up today. It's either we're lying <laughs> or something is going on. Anyway, now these are different things that could possibly happen when we're praying. But what gives us the confidence about, um, about the fact that our prayers will be answered is when we pray according to the will of God. And how do we know the will of God? We spend time with the word. We spend time with the word, not just on the times that we come to church on Sundays, we spend time with the word every day of the week. 
the Bible helps us to understand that it is critically important for us to meditate on the word of God. I think that's Joshua 1, 8. And this book of the law shall not depart after the mouth, but thou shalt meditate on it day and night. And then it goes ahead to say, then thou shalt have good success and all. So meditating on the word of God is important. And so when we look at all of this, when we go to God in prayer, it's essentially also helping us connect with where we're from. So, okay, maybe I didn't say that right. Um, we do know that when God created man, it was his breath that gave man life. So the life that we live right now is actually the life of God in us. Does that make sense? Yes. And so when we go to God in prayer, when we are praying his will, at every point, what we're doing is we're essentially rejuvenating ourselves. And that is why you cannot be a man of prayer and get easily depressed. You cannot be a man of prayer and get easily uh, distraught about things or you lack the joy of the Holy Spirit because when you spend time praying, I'm not saying you won't have pain. Those are two different things, you know. But when you spend time praying and you spend time with the will of God, praying the will and the mind of the Father, what you would see is you have a lot more joy. The Bible says that the kingdom of God is not in meat or, or drink, but in righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So when you spend time praying, what you do is you keep bringing the kingdom of God. You keep establishing the kingdom of God over whatever the issue is. But how do we know what, how to pray? Still go back to the word of God. Amen? Are we still together? Okay. So, prayer, like I said, is more about God than it is about us. Prayer is definitely not about us. Now, I just want to, I know for a lot of us, we... If we grew up in church, we've, we've heard that word prayer over and over again. So let's talk about um, the purpose. So now, okay, before I go into that, one of the other things I want to mention is prayer is a sacrifice. Uh, I remember one time here I did mention, I, I did a teaching about uh, the Christian menu. Uh, also based on Matthew 6, where Jesus talked about when you fast, when you pray, when you give. How many of you were here? Okay, just a few people. Now, we talked, so when we talked about that, essentially what we looked at was what makes you grow as a Christian are essentially not things about you. So when you look at the entire lives of, of a Christian, what you see is your life has to be a life of sacrifice. When you pray, we just saw that it's praying the mind of the Father. It's not, just, it's not about the things that you want. When you give, it's you giving things that ordinarily could have been for you. That's sacrifice. And when you fast, it is denying yourself of things that you could have. And these are, some of the, these are the things that make you grow. So when you, when you take that in here, you'd see that prayer itself is a sacrifice, and you cannot grow as a Christian except you live a life of sacrifice. So essentially, when you go to God in prayer, what you're doing is you're letting go of yourself so that you can have more of God. It was John the Baptist that said something about that he may increase and I may decrease. So when we're talking about the purpose of prayer, here we're looking at how do we continually decrease that the will of the Father may be done. So it's not just about, oh, we spent time praying when we went to church because somebody led something. It is you continually living that life that um, aligns with the will of God. Amen? So here, what we see is that when our focus is about the prevalence of God's will, it will be pleasing to God, which is also critically important. God is much more interested in showing us things than what we know. 
in Jeremiah 33, verse 3, he said, Call unto me, and I'll answer thee. Which means, when you call, he's definitely going to answer. And then he goes ahead to say, And show thee great things, great and mighty things that you do not know. So when we go to God in prayer, it's not about what do I pray about. It's not about how do I um, spend you know, this many minutes before God in prayer. Even God wants to give you things. He wants to tell you things. Uh, there have been times that I, would, I might start out praying about something, and then gradually what I would see is I'm having prayer points, and I'm certain they're not prayer points um, from me, because well, at the initial stage, I knew that if I was praying, maybe I was praying generally about life, and I just wanted to spend time praying. Sometimes I'd realize that God would give me prayer points maybe about the city, pray about the mayor, pray about the chief administrative officer. I mean, on a normal day, <laughs> those won't come to my mind. But as time goes on, I realize that God, as I pray those prayers, then God gives me more to pray about. And that is because these are things that he needs people to pray about so that his will will be done. Okay? And then the moment we do that, then he can reveal more things to you. If you live a life where everything you know is just the, is just the information that you have gotten by yourself, Maybe you may, you may be cheating yourself because God wants to give you so much in the place of prayer, in the, in the life that is aligned to his will, much more than you can ever imagine. So it is important that we do that. So what are the benefits of prayer? Of course, definitely you hear from God. Psalm 32 verse 8 says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will, counsel, I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. Definitely you will hear from God. In Jeremiah 33 verse 3, he said, call unto me. He's saying, just call. I will answer you. And much more than answering you, I will show you things that you don't know. The marvelous things I want to do in your life, the marvelous things that I have proposed to do in your territory, in your family, over your children, I will show you. And these are things that we cannot, we cannot know by ourselves. He, um, Jesus did say something about the fact that um, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will teach us all things. And then he says he will show you things to come. How do we spend that time with the Holy Spirit will start in the place of prayer and aligning our lives with the will of God. Amen? Amen. Number two, peace of mind. Uh, Philippians 4, verse 6 to 7, it says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Verse 7, it says, And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So when you spend time praying, when you realize that a lot of things are going wrong around you, maybe in the city, maybe in the family, maybe about your health, what do you do? You pray. And in order, because things are sent to you by the enemy to distort your peace. And once your peace is distorted, you begin to worry. Once you start worrying, you don't, you don't sleep well enough, and then your health starts taking a shot because everything goes wrong. So he gives you peace when you pray. Number three, it gives you answers. First John 5, 7, 5.14, it says, And this is the confidence we have before him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Every single time you pray, in Jeremiah 33, verse 3, it says, God will answer. Now, I'm, I'm aware that there are some of us who, when we pray, we just kind of hope that maybe this one will stick. Maybe God will answer this one. But here, the Bible is saying that the confidence we have is 
Anytime we ask him, he will answer. It's not whether he may. However, it goes back to Matthew 6, where it was talking about how do we pray? You pray according to the will of God. I think it's in uh, the book of Mark, if I can find it, where it says that whatsoever you ask according to his will, he will answer. He will answer. So he definitely gives us answers, and we have to understand that. Because if we don't expect answers, most likely we'll not get it. If we think maybe we're going to get answers, a double-minded person will receive nothing from God. That's in the book of James. So we need to believe and have that confidence. So we will definitely get answers when we pray. And then number four, access to power. Now, this is one thing that for a lot of us, um, I know we define power in different ways, but one of the things that you would see happen in the book of Acts was the apostles would pray. I mean, the, the, there was a first one, and you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and then you're empowered to you know, uh, minister in Judea, Samaria, and all to the uttermost part of the earth. You're empowered to do something. So there is that power. There's also power beyond what your own normal abilities are. And so when you continually depend on your flesh, on your qualifications, on your personal identity, your personal self-worth, you know, to be able to achieve anything in life, it's saying, you're cheating yourself. You say, but when you spend time praying, God gives you something. God gives you the Holy Spirit that empowers you to do much more than your ability. If you spend a lot more time praying, one of the things that I can guarantee is beyond your health status, beyond your, um, uh, the natural abilities or the qualifications that you think, oh, if I have this, then it will get me here. God actually will open doors for you. And we have testimonies of people who have been able to enter through doors that do not, um, it's beyond their qualifications. That has happened to me many times, in many ways, where I know if it was by my qualifications or by um, the definitions of who Steve is, I definitely should not be able to get these things. But then you get it. Or you probably even get it in record time. So it gives you access to power, which is the capacity, I think in physics, power is defined as the ability to do work. So it says, call unto me and I'll answer you and show you great and mighty things which you don't know. Next one is protection. Philippians 4, 7, it talks about, and the peace of God which passes all understanding shall guard your hearts and minds through Jesus. And the reason that comes about is in Proverbs 4, 23, the Bible says that guard your heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. So when the Bible is saying that, you know, and the peace of God will guard your heart, what he's doing is he's protecting the essence or the core of who you are so that the things that will come out of you would not be broken or faulty. Amen? Amen. Okay. And the last one I have here is discernment. When you pray, God will trust to speak to you a lot more. God will tell you things about people. He will tell you things about cities, governments, tell you things about whatever he wants you to know or whatever he needs um, someone to bridge a gap between the spirit realm and the physical, God will speak to you. He will let you know. He'll give you the, uh, the um, I think some people call it premonition, but essentially the Holy Spirit is telling you things ahead of time so that you as a kingdom, uh, uh, what's it called now? Kingdom campaigner can actually work with God to bring to pass whatever he wants to do. So if you look at yourself and you go like, when was the last time God spoke to me? 
When was the last time God actually gave me a message that is beyond myself? It may be an indication to uh, uh, an indication towards uh, how much you spend time praying. Now, God always wants to speak to you. God always wants to uh, have you in, in alignment with him. You know, a lot of times we talk about God being father. Yes, he loves us and he will always love us. But what God wants much more than anything are people who are committed to his kingdom. In the book of 2 Timothy, uh, it talks about soldiers. It says, no soldier entangles himself with civilian affairs, which means everything that you have been assigned to as a Christian is what the, the general commander is giving as an, as an order. So if we look at your life, you look at your prayers, you look at the, the things that you do, how many of it is obeying the commander's instruction? And so when you place all of that in like a timeline, what it helps you do is to help you know whether you are actually that soldier that is entangling a lot with civilian affairs. Now, civilian affairs are fine, but once you become a Christian and you enlist into the, king, uh, into the army of the Lord, what you do is, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Nothing about you, nothing about your preferences, because when you look towards the will of the Father, oftentimes, and it happens even in the army, as you... As you continue your following the commander's instructions, the better you do, you get promoted. It comes with its own perks. Uh, at some point, maybe, uh, maybe you get an increase in salary. I'm not sure how it's done here. But, but in Nigeria, you get promoted. You get um, uh, more oddlies or what's the word now? Uh, soldiers that are attached to you to that you can send on errands or that you can give instructions to, to do something for you personally or whatever it is. But as you graduate, there are perks that will come. But essentially what it's saying is every time you, you kneel to pray, it is not about you. Your needs will be met. In Matthew 6, 33, you remember I said something about uh, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be added to you. So what he's talking about in Matthew 6, 9 to 13, he goes ahead to reinforce it in uh, 33 to say, you will have needs. Those needs will be met. But essentially it's important that you focus on what is more critical and more important to the Father's will. Does that make sense? Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this time. Thank you because we've talked about prayer again, more as a reminder of why we pray. God, I pray that your Holy Spirit will help us in different, uh, in different ways to increase our capacity to pray, teach us more and more to spend time with you in the place of prayer that we may always do your will, know what the mind of the Father is, that we may always be the soldiers that are always doing the beatings of the commander. You, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God.